Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Finger. I'm the director of the New York Eye Cancer Center. I'm chairman of the American Joint Committee on Cancer's Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force and CEO of the Eye Cancer Foundation. My training is as a specialist in ocular tumor, orbital disease, and ophthalmic radiation therapy. In honor of Sonal Shogale Yadev's book, Retinoblastoma, Diagnosis to Management, I'd like to present a video educating viewers on retinoblastoma worldwide, what it is, how it affects children in high, middle, and lower income regions, and their global outcomes. Welcome. First, let's discuss what is retinoblastoma. Second, I want to let you know that it is curable. And third, let's ask the question, why doesn't everyone have access to eye, vision, and life-sparing treatment? Well, retinoblastoma is the most common eye cancer in children. It begins inside the eye in a tissue called the retina. The retina is like the film in your ocular camera. As you can see in this poster, children may look like they have a white pupil called leukocoria, a crossed eye called strabismus, or a bulging eye called bufthalmus. By the way, these posters can be downloaded for free from the Eye Cancer Foundation's website, eyecancercure.com. They can be printed and posted for patient and family education. We know that medical centers in high-resource countries already have early diagnosis and advanced medical care, which have provided excellent eye and vision salvage rates. But for those children in middle to lower resource countries, this is not the case. In Asia and Africa, children more likely present with advanced high-risk retinoblastoma tumors that fill and even extend out of the eye, resulting in metastasis and death. As published in the journal Ophthalmology, a series of multi-center international registry-based studies were performed by the American Joint Committee on Cancer's Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force. These efforts included 41 eye cancer specialists in 18 eye subspecialty centers from 13 countries on six continents. This research showed that overall survival, globe salvage, and visual acuity outcomes have been compromised due to disparities in socioeconomic and related healthcare factors. Clearly, the world requires targeted healthcare policies to improve retinoblastoma outcomes. The number of children developing retinoblastoma is proportional to the size of each country's population. Further, in high resource, lower population, lower birth rate countries like Japan, the USA, and in Europe, more resources are applied to fewer children, resulting in better outcomes. In addition, these countries have national retinoblastoma registries and nonprofit charities with outreach not found in the lower resource countries. In contrast, 83% of children with retinoblastoma are born in Asia and Africa. India leads with the highest number of retinoblastoma cases in the world. India alone has nearly 2,000 cases per year. To complicate matters, most of these children come from resource-poor areas, thus suffer delays in diagnosis, resulting in children presenting with more and more advanced cases. Our most recent AJCC OOTF registry study showed that these children are more likely to lose their eye, lose their sight, and lose their lives. To complicate matters, low-resource families are more likely to have their decisions influenced by religious beliefs and gender preferences. Financial instability and scarcity of ophthalmic resources also contribute to delays in retinoblastoma care. Once these children reach care, treatment is both psychologically and financially devastating to the family. Clearly, there exist two worlds of retinoblastoma because rates of eye salvage and death are different depending upon where in the world you're treated. Due to early detection followed by successful 
available local systemic and salvage therapy, children in high-resource countries are more likely to die from second non-ocular malignancy. This is not the case for children in lower resource countries whom are more likely to lose their eye and die from metastatic retinoblastoma. While survival and palliative pain-free therapy are common for one world, there is a high resource world where a safety net of systemic and life salvage therapies have shifted the focus to maximizing eye and vision salvage. Paraphrased from the enlightened Indian leader Mahatma Gandhi, let us ask how we can be the change we wish to see in this world. The answer is complicated. I want you to know that such progress is possible, but it will be difficult and unfortunately slow. Low resource countries need to raise awareness amongst both the public and medical sectors. Referral pathways to trained eye cancer specialists must be made available for prompt diagnosis and treatment. Retinoblastoma specialists must be equipped and funded to provide protocol-based care. In conclusion, despite knowing that early detection and prompt enucleation is typically curative, reducing retinoblastoma death across the world remains a huge challenge. We must start by training retinoblastoma specialists from unserved and underserved countries. This is why the Eye Cancer Foundation has developed a network of training centers and has produced over 50 new retinoblastoma specialists. We have supported the production of the soon-to-be-released Open Access International Retinoblastoma Certification Course and have provided an Open Access Eye Cancer Surgical Text and Atlas. We now celebrate Dr. Shagulay Yadav's book, Retinoblastoma, Diagnosis to Management. However, these doctors cannot do it alone. Our governmental and non-governmental organizations must create and support local networks of ophthalmic, pathology, pediatric, and radiation oncology specialists. Only they can foster the synchronized, multi-step approaches that involve public awareness, professional training, infant eye screening, and medical economic development. While the AJCC OOTF has shown that multi-center international cooperative data pooling can be used to answer crucial questions regarding treatment strategies to help guide government policies, retinoblastoma treatment outcomes must be improved by taking what we have learned from high-resource countries to save both life and sight. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation. We are all in debt to the Eye Cancer Foundation for supporting research and educational opportunities. We are all grateful to Dr. Shagula Yadev for sharing her experience in this book. We all want to help you, your children, your families, and all the families around the world. Please consider visiting our website, https colon backslash backslash eyecancercure.com. Thank you and have a nice day.